Hi, my name is Denny LaRue, Larimer County Community Information Manager. And I'm Neil Gluckman, Assistant County Manager. And we're here on That Larimer County Show to talk about financial literacy. Thanks for joining us. And with us today we have Laurel Cuban, who is to my left, and she is Director of the Extension Services. And we also have Jesse May Hendrickson, do I have that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And she has been um, one of the participants in a program that we're going to be talking about, which is financial literacy, which is very relevant for what we're going through in our times right now. Absolutely. And, you know, that's why we thought we'd really like to do this show, because there's a push for financial literacy, and you really have put together some interesting programs and sort of been a starter in that field. Can you tell us for the viewers out there, first of all, some context, what are we talking about when we're talking about financial literacy programs, and why is it important? Sure. Well, actually, financial literacy, we could talk about financial education instead, because learning money management is a learned skill. It's not something that we're born with and yet it's something that all of us need to know more about because we use it on a daily basis. And so the whole effort behind the financial literacy or financial education movement is to try to increase everyone's educational level so that they can be more successful with their own money management. So is this a new thing, Laurel, or is this something that's come out of the economic crisis of the recent past, or is this just been a movement over time? Where, where do we find that? Where does that end up? Well, I think it's something that we've all needed to know since the beginning of time. However, with the current economic situation, it's just really brought it to the forefront as an issue. And Extension has been involved with trying to get more information out, more education to people, so that they can make the best choices possible for themselves as they deal with these economic situations and make choices for their futures. So financial information or financial literacy or financial education, is it a matter of how to save and how to spend? I mean, what is it? It's actually how to save, how to spend, how to share, how to manage your resources, whether they're financial or other kinds of resources, your time and so forth, so that you can achieve the goals that you have for your financial future. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, Jesse May, you were in a situation, I take it, where you might have either overspent or undersaved. Why don't you talk a little bit, give us a little background on yourself. Yes, um, I at one time found myself in a financial mess and was told to go to the extension office because they're teaching folks about money management. So I contacted the office and was had the pleasure of being connected with Laurel Cuban direct, directly and she coached me with patience and gave me the tools to get back on track with my money management. Mm -hmm. So what was your background? Did, when, you, um, when you grew up, did you learn about money management at all? I mean, obviously you're saying that, was that part of your upbringing? I mean, with so many people, it's not. Yes, so. I came to the table with Lauren, Laurel with no money management skills at all. I didn't grow up with it. We didn't talk about it in the house. So uh, after speaking with her, I did uh, gain a lot more knowledge. Okay. So what did you do? Did you start taking some of the programs or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She worked with me one-on-one -on -one at first and mm -hmm. she helped me change my thinking about money. Uh, so she, uh, before her, I was thinking about, I, I had a budget and I tried to use it, but it wasn't very good for me. It was a negative thing. Mm -hmm. So she, t she taught me to think about it as a savings plan. And that's all it took for me. It was just a shift in my thinking. Mm -hmm. And so to this day, I use a savings plan. Uh, so she helped me map out a savings plan for my household. Mm -hmm. And then she also gave me uh, tools that I could use along the way that I might necessarily not have needed then because I didn't have a credit card at that time. But she taught me about credit card use. And she also introduced me to the um, credit card prison, which wasn't hers, but she uses this tool in Larimer County. Uh, so at, years later, I did get a credit card, and uh, I did have to. I did overspend, and I had to put it in credit credit card prison. So it's a sleeve that you put the credit card in, and you write the amount that you overspent or that it's due on it, and then you estimate how long it's going to take you to pay it off, and you put that date as um, the date it could get out of prison. So I have had to use mm. that. Uh, you know, credit, well. credit cards have their purpose, but they can be abused. Why don't you talk a little yeah, bit about let's, that? Yes. 
You know, what I find is that people either have a, a good relationship with their credit card or they don't. And the way I view credit in general is that it's a tool for us. And we can choose to use that tool very wisely, very carefully, or we can choose to use it and just keep using it and using it and using it, racking up debt and not being able to get it paid off very fast. And when we do that, that's working against us. Mm -hmm. Because the more we pay on interest, the less we can be earning interest mm -hmm. on the money that we might have in a savings account or in investments or wherever. And so we really encourage people to only charge the amount on their credit card that they can pay off at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Live within your means. That's the bottom line mm -hmm. of money management. So the credit card becomes a convenient way to make a payment um, rather than something that's borrowed money. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Credit cards aren't bad. Mm -hmm. They're just a tool. But what about the desire to own something like a new car or mm -hmm. a new TV? What how do you, what do you tell somebody that you have this much money but you really want this? What do you do in between to make that decision or not make the decision to buy that? Well, first of all, look at is that something you really need? And is it something that you could save up for or at least save a portion of the money for it ahead of time so that you don't have to borrow as much? Uh, also, shopping around to make sure you're getting the best deal. Mm -hmm. And a television isn't something that we all have to have immediately. And so take a look at how much do you need it, how much do you want it. Does it have to be the biggest television, mm -hmm. or could it be something a little more modest? And then take a look at, really, is that something you want to put on credit? Mm -hmm. Because you might pay just pick a number, uh, $500 for a television. But if you pay for that using credit and you're paying interest on that television, the actual price of the television might wind up being, you know, $575, $600, totally negating whatever the sale price mm -hmm. might mm -hmm. have been to start with. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure that in to start with. How fast can you pay off that charge. Now with a house or with a car, most of us can't afford to go out and buy those sort of things with cash. Mm -hmm. And so using credit is a tool that we can use to be able to afford those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But the payment still has to fit within whatever your income is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to afford right, it to right. start with. You, in, you mentioned um, there's just a lot less stress involved if you uh, don't have uh, credit card issues. I mean, the more issues you have, the more stress you're going to have over it. Most people, anyway, are going to have a lot of stress. So it's it not only affects your credit rating, but it might affect your health and, and a lot of other things, too. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, there's a very strong correlation between your wealth situation and your health mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. Because so many of the things that affect our health are financially related and if we have poor health that's usually affecting our wealth mm -hmm, situation mm -hmm. too. And so one of the things that Extension is doing now is we have a program that's called Small Steps to Health and Wealth and it helps people take a look at those relationships between health and wealth and how if you make just one small change it can affect both your health and your wealth mm -hmm. situation. And uh, this is something that especially for small employers or employers that have small workforces, if they're interested in that, it's a way that we could introduce that to their employees mm -hmm. and they could use that as a wellness program, so to speak. In fact, I'm, yeah. I'm talking with the manager in uh, the town of Berthoud and also the town of Estes Park, they don't have a wellness program for their employees. And so this may be something that they will be adopting as a way of having mm -hmm. somewhat of a wellness program mm -hmm. for their mm -hmm. employees. Well, let's go back, Jesse May, for a minute because this, um, it's, and that's, uh, I think those are great sounding programs too. And, and something turned the light on for you. I mean, th this might be something their employees need. But when you said the whole shift to a savings plan versus a budget, 
you had a budget, but it wasn't meeting your needs. Right. And how, can you expand on that a little bit? It, I, when I had a budget, I was thinking of it in a negative sense about what I couldn't spend and how much money I didn't have. Oh, okay. um, and when she turned the switch, mental switch for me to think about it as a savings plan, it was about where are my dollars going? Um, do I really need my dollars to go in certain places? It was just about cleaning up my money mm -hmm. and, um, and then also saving for a rainy day, which I hadn't done. So it became fun for me and to look at this uh, savings plan and get creative about how I can make more money go into that uh, rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. How did you find out about our services? Mm -hmm. I, I found out uh, by looking at the Larimer County website um, and then I, I looked on, I found Extension that way and saw all the things that ex Extension does and one of them was uh, money management. Okay, so then you contacted Extension Services and then they put you in contact with with our Laurel the director, and then eventually went to a class. Is that right? Uh, well, one on one. Yeah, I had too. I had the privilege of having one That's on great. one help yeah. with her before uh -huh. I went to class. But you so. went to the what was the what's the class called? The um, it was the initial financial literacy push. Uh, so uh -huh. I don't know what the name of the title was. I don't remember um, the name of the class. But it either. was the, the first uh, push that she did for fi financial literacy in Larimer County. Uh -huh. So did someone mention to you that Extension did this and? Yeah, so then yes. you went looking for it. Yes. That's great that there are tools out there that, you know. So what would you say is the biggest thing you do now that keeps you in a place where you can, you can have a, a good financial situation? Definitely sticking to the savings plan, seeing it as a savings plan, uh, and just paying attention to where my dollars go. I really track that. Um, we, when we did my savings plan, we noticed that I do need to have some spending cash. That's important to me. Mm -hmm. So um, we, uh, we accounted for that in the plan. So to this day, I still I have an envelope of spending cash that I can, I can spend this much during the week. And that helps me stick to the plan in general because it, feels, it doesn't feel as punitive to me. I have some spending cash that I can go out to lunch with my friends if I want to. I know what I can do within that budget. Mm -hmm. So, You know, I remember one of my uh, nieces a while back saying to me, I really want to take a trip, but I'll never be able to save the money for it ever uh, on their, what they made. And, you know, but I said, if you put, to get, put just a little bit aside every paycheck, mm -hmm. just a small amount, then in a while, it's going to be enough to take a trip. Maybe not next month or the month after, but eventually. And I think that's hard for people sometimes to see the over the time, the big picture. How do you help people with that? Well, that's called paying yourself first. And that's okay. one of the first uh, concepts that we really work on when we're talking about creating that spending and savings plan. And I'm, I'm so pleased to hear Jesse May refer to it as that spending and savings plan because that's how I... Mm -hmm. like to refer to it. I don't like the B word because most people don't like the B word budget. I'm on a budget. It feels, yeah. it feels negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas if I ask you, Denny, are you going to spend money? Yes. You're, you're probably going to say yes. yes. <laughs> so let's just plan to spend it and then live according to that plan. Mm -hmm. And within that plan, one of the very first things that we do, the, right when we pay our rent or the mortgage, we pay ourselves too. And that's putting that money aside for emergencies, building up that emergency fund, and also for those things that are important to us, like taking that trip, perhaps. You mentioned sharing as part of the, can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, there are really three things that you can do with your money after you earn it. One is spend it, one is save it, and one is share it. Mm -hmm. And sharing is a very good feeling. Mm -hmm. usually for people when they're able to share, whether it be with a, uh, a nonprofit charity, with their faith community, with their neighbors, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. so that is just something that we need to recognize as a way of using our money. Mm -hmm. But we need to plan to do that. Right. I always feel good when Denny shares her money with me. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, now, what kind of programs do you offer right now? I mean, what, if I were to call... What would you tell me in okay. terms of the literacy program, not literacy, but uh, uh, financial literacy programs? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> through our financial literacy initiative, there are a number of us that have gone together to offer programs through the Pooter Library District. And so on the, 
Second Monday evening of every month, there is some type of an educational program that people can come to mm -hmm. that's open to the public. That same program is repeated on the Wednesday noon following, so there's an opportunity to go in the evening or during the daytime, depending on availability. Mm -hmm. And um, a person can find out about those classes either through the library district or they can go to the Larimer County Extension website and learn about those as well. I'm offering classes for the City of Fort Collins and Larimer County employees and the public is welcome to attend those as well. Again, you can find out about those through the Larimer County Extension website. I also offer classes for a number of our nonprofit organizations and um, depending on the class and the arrangements with the nonprofit, there may be an opportunity for the public to mm -hmm. participate in some of those also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the uh, public ways. If you go to our website, you'll also at times see classes that I'm setting up that are specifically for just anybody who wants to come. I'll be offering the Money Talks for Women mm -hmm. class again this year. It's a series of five sessions that goes all the way from basic money management up through planning your investments and, and your estate. And so you can learn about those kinds of classes mm -hmm. through the Lamar County Extension website. Mm -hmm. So are a lot of people still catching up, you know, a few months later after the holidays with their, you know, that's a time that's so tempting to want to overspend. It um, is. And depending on how well people planned <laughs> for the holiday spending, yes, they may still be catching up well into the spring or summer. And through our classes, we would hope that they would start planning for that early in the year so that they weren't necessarily charging so much. Uh, during the holidays. So if they start thinking about that in the summer and say, I'm going to put aside this much for the holiday, I want to buy gifts or I want to spend money during the holidays or my family wants to do something, um, they would put aside a certain amount maybe every month so that when the fall came they'd be ready with their... Exactly. Yeah, something yeah. like that. A lot less stress probably. A lot less stress. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a stressful time of year anyway. Why make it more stressful? Yeah, good point. You know, credit cards, um, you go through the whole notion of when you spend X amount of money, how long it will take with the interest. Did, I mean, did you have a, did you kind of surprised when you looked at whatever that balance was and how long it was going to take to? Very surprised. Yeah, I wasn't accounting for interest at all mm -hmm. until she enlightened me to interest. And um, so it was a tough number to look at, but you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm very aware really, of it now. You know, for those viewers, the, the, that number is really buried. If you, I mean, not, not to take anything away from credit card companies, but it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really think you're paying this off, and pretty soon you're going to see a zero account, and then it's right. not going to happen. Well, and if you don't spend anything more on that credit card at all, it's still, you're still going to owe more every month because of the interest. You right? can, yes. You can. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's pretty shocking to people who are just getting underway with finances mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and trying to get a hold of it. You know, I think of the credit card companies really try to um, advertise themselves to young people like yourself and try to kind of get you hooked. Exactly. Fortunately, with the Card Act that was passed a couple of years ago, now the credit card companies do have to put on your statement up in bold letters at the top where it's visible. Mm -hmm. If you continue to pay at just oh, the minimum okay. yeah. payment every month, it's going to take you X amount of years, <laughs> months right. to, to pay that <laughs> off. So it's greater awareness for people, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I think is a very positive mm -hmm. move. Yeah. But that was probably a regulation that I'm sure a lawmakers had a hard time getting through, but I'm yeah. glad they did. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Talking, before talking to Laurel, I thought paying just the minimum was good. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so. but it, yeah. It doesn't the yeah because yeah. it keeps going up. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. one of the tools that yeah. we refer to frequently is what we call Power Pay, and anybody in the audience can go to this website. It was created at Utah State University Extension, and it is just www.powerpay.org, and it's a way of putting in what all of your debts are mm -hmm. with the interest rate, what your payment is. And you can work out your own debt repayment plan mm. to figure out how to pay down your debts faster so that you're not paying as much interest 
and it makes it very clear to you the amount of interest that you're saving hmm. if you do, in fact, pay them so down So you faster. pay a little bit more than the minimum each month, and you can see where that's going to uh, speed up your payoff. Exactly. And not to be confused with Powerball, which is the site <laughs> that I go to. Powerplay.org. <laughs> Powerplay.org. Powerpay.org is where you want to go. Powerplay.org. They're the power play. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Jesse May, has this uh, spilled over this new knowledge and uh, that you've gained over time now to your friends and relatives? Have, have they been asking you, saying, how did you do this? How did you? For sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely um, have helped many people that I come in contact with. If they even mention that they're having a financial issue, I point them to the resources that I learned through Extension. And also uh, my my family, you know, I'm I'm working with my mother on a savings budget. Denver thought I'd teach her <laughs> about <laughs> that, and then just it it changed my household. I have children now, so I I talk about money in front of my kids, which is something that has never been done with me. So I don't think you're alone there. I I ran into somebody recently who has kids that uh, have already graduated from college, and they said if they were going to do one thing differently, they would have spent more time talking about financial issues with their kids. It's just mm -hmm. not something I think a lot of people think about. It's like, you know, we're the parents, we'll take care of the bills, and the kids are the kids. Mm -hmm. But um, so how do you talk to your kids about yeah. financial? Well, when Laurel first brought it up to me, I, it was very uncomfortable. I just didn't think that's something you're supposed to do. Yeah. Kids don't need to know about that. Yeah. And I didn't have a good financial situation to talk about. But that's why it was very important to talk about it. They needed to know what financial situation we were in so they could see how I got out of it. Um, so now that I'm in a better financial um, spot, we still talk about money and we talk about it in, in their frame of work mm -hmm. so that, um, he, you know, for, my, for instance, my son, he wants to save money for something. He gets, um, he gets credit. <laughs> that he can earn towards stuff, and he's very aware of what that credit can do. He also saves money um, at the same time, so we just talk about it. Mm -hmm. So he's understanding that big picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. One of the classes that I offer is teaching your children money habits for life, and it's, it's a popular class oh, okay. generally. I always encourage parents to talk out loud about the things they're saying no to themselves about so that the kids can see that, oh, mom and dad aren't just saying no to me, the kid. Because, you know, as parents, we often wind up saying, no, you can't have this, or no, you don't need that. Kids need to see that we say that to ourselves, too, mm -hmm. so that they're learning that we have to wait sometimes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or we have to stop and think about how much mm -hmm. I really need that, or so do I need it right now? Mm -hmm. How early do you start teaching your children about money? Oh, you can start when they are three, four, five years old. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the concept has to be appropriate mm -hmm. for the age or the stage that they're mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. but we do have some excellent extension fact sheets mm -hmm. that talk about that and spell it out. You know, this would be an appropriate kind of activity or conversation for a five to seven year old or a, a preteen or a teenager and so forth. And the class is called How to Be a Good Capitalist Child. <laughs> it's not so, the uh, baby in the crib talking the stock market uh, commercials? Generally <laughs> not, no. Although, although those are cute, yeah. they're not too realistic. <laughs> so that, um, that brings me to the thought, is this something that you're seeing catch, catch on nationwide? Is this something that we're, the, the country is sort of looking at a, a new? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Extension has offered classes and information on money management mm -hmm. since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. or since the beginning of <laughs> Extension at least. A long time. But, you know, for a long time, a lot of folks were very hesitant to go to a, a financial education class mm -hmm. because, you know, that's a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. But what I'm seeing now is there's more willingness and awareness that it's okay. It's, an edu it's, it's a part of our skill set that we need to get more education on, and things change over time. So there are more people who are willingly saying, yes, sign me up. I, I really want to learn. Mm -hmm. and, and that's refreshing. Yeah. And I bet the, the, the emotional aspect of, um, plays into, into play because I would guess, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, uh, Jesse May, but you probably felt somewhat depressed when you're in a situation of not having money 
And I bet your outlook right now is that success is possible. Maybe it's already here. Yes. So um, tell, yeah, go ahead. For sure, success is possible. And I can honestly say that um, success is here for me now. Um, through using the savings plan, I was able to pay down my debt enough to qualify for a home mortgage loan, which I had never been able to do wow. before. Um, and as of November, I'm a first time homeowner. Wow. Well, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very great. thrilled about it. And I just see continued success using this plan that she um, has helped me with because I'm hoping that maybe I can even pay off my mortgage sooner than the loan says I need to. So I'll just continue great. to use it. Great. Well, congratulations. Thanks. So that is, that's great from, from having to um, think about, as Neil said, a little depression wrapping around the idea of, I've got to go get this straight now to buying your first home because you've gone, you have these new tools. That's, that's really inspirational. Mm -hmm. That's really fabulous. What, are you going to continue? Are there more financial um, tools that you need? Are there more financial programs you're interested in learning about? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, extension is starting to look towards, maybe you've already d done this, but looking towards the future more. So I'm looking forward to that information about investing in, in my retirement and investing uh, in stocks and even uh, how to al um, allocate your resources when a loved one passes away. So things like that I'm mm -hmm. interested in. All right. And then you'll be becoming a financial planner. That's right. There you go. <laughs> CFP <laughs> in training. We have about a minute left, and um, we want to wrap it up and, and say thank you for being here. And uh, this is really interesting. It's, it's great to hear what you're saying, too, about people are so much more willing now to take these programs because they want to be more financially savvy. It's a, an important thing. Any uh, last thoughts on this? You want to tell us how to get a hold of you again and stuff like that? Certainly. They can just go to the Larimer County website for extension. And basically, that's www.larimer.org mm -hmm. forward slash EXT. That'll take you directly to the extension website. Another website that I'd refer people to is the what we call eExtension website, which is our whole national website, which has terrific information there that has been collected from all of the uh, land-grant university extension sites. And that's just www.extension.org. So if someone feels like they don't have time to go to a seminar, they could go online and get a lot of information. Yes, they can. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to thank Jesse May for sharing your story. That takes courage. And, uh, and congratulations for being on the track that you're now on. So Thanks. Good for you. Mm -hmm. And of course, thank you, Laurel, for even having these programs for <laughs> us in Larimer County. It's, it's a great resource. Good. My pleasure. Okay. Hey, thanks, Neil. And thank you, Denny. And thank you for joining us for that Larimer County show. Thank you.